Yo, what's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to the podcast, another episode of Caffeine and Green with your man, Connor Cardenas. And before we get into it today, I just want to give a huge shout out to the title sponsor of Caffeine and Green, which is Seven Seas Roasting Company, coming straight out of San Diego, California, my home roaster, and most of the time where you'll find me during the week. Now, what's so great about Seven Seas Roasting is that we're doing things a little bit different in specialty coffee. We're working with coffee farmers and villages in Laos and Vietnam, and we're bringing those coffees to life. But along with that, we're also showcasing other amazing coffees, Colombia's, uh, Ethiopians, Guatemala's, Mexican coffees, which is coming down the pipe. So get ready, y'all. Now, full transparency, I am the head roaster at Seven Seeds, as most of you know. But regardless, I think by now y'all know that I'm giving you straight fire with that coffee. So what I want you to do is head over to sevenseasroasting.com, put in my code CNG at checkout, and you're going to get a deal, which is Three bags of coffee for 30 bucks. I mean, that's a no brainer if you really think about it because two bags is $32 right there. So you're essentially getting one bag of coffee for free. It's a no brainer, like I said. Now, right now we have the El Jaguar, which is amazing. It's chocolate, it's nutty. It has a little bit of orange zest up front. We also have an array of new Lao coffees. The Katua Village, we have the Fodom Kwan, and we also have the classic Setapung. Now we also have some other things coming down the pipe again, like I mentioned, so be ready, but that's what you have to choose for. And we have amazing, those they're, they're just, they're amazing coffees. I really hope you guys enjoy it. And again, use that code C and G at checkout. That's C A N D G. And you're going to get that deal three for 30 bucks. Now, unfortunately the charity coffees, which is the Kaha collective and the spikes roast don't come in this deal. But you still have so many coffees to choose from. It's all G. So head over, guys. C and G at checkout to get that deal. My guest today, Paul Mulberry. He is a good homie of mine. We've been been homies for quite some time now. But as of recently, he has now taken on a position at Law Records. And he's doing some really cool shit these days. And I was... I've been super inspired to see the homie succeeding and just have and enjoying what he's doing and has a true passion for what he's doing. So without further ado, I really hope you guys enjoy this podcast. It was so sick talking to the homie, Paul Mulberry. This is your time to shine, homie. Let's go. And we are live, Yee. Paul Marbury. Cheers. Welcome to Caffeine and Green, sir. Hey, good to Cheers. be here. Cheers. Salute. Every episode starts that way. I love it. I think it's becoming a nice little thing. I like cheering uh, people who are hustling. Hey. It's like a little, it's like, a, hell yeah, good for you. I like it. Dude, I you like know it. what I'm saying? Gotta support the hustle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dude, I have to say, we're talking about before the podcast, you're my second uh, music person music professional on the show and that's you know I, i've been following you on instagram and that sparked my interest in wanting to have you on the show is you work for law records mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about that um about law records or yeah. about how i got to be law records well or? tell me a little bit about law records first and then we'll talk about how you got right, into cool. it uh law records is uh owned by the band pepper they are the owners, and it's their label. They started it, um, I think, in about 2008 um, with the release of Pink Crustaceans and Good Vibrations. Okay. The name came from a band that Yasad, who's the drummer for Pepper, uh, his dad was in a band called The Law. And so Law. I think that was circa 1983. Oh, and shit. so when they had the opportunity to re-release their own... Uh, they got the masters on their own album. They were like, sick. Let's do it under law. Let, let's call it law. And, and so that, I think that was what made the most sense. And so from there, they started releasing their own albums and independent label, independent label, doing yep. it, their, doing it on their own and um, bringing bands in along the way. And, uh, and honestly, they've just been crushing. Like as long as I can remember, they've been um, really being like picking the, 
just been on the forefront of bands. Like, I mean, they released Iration's Time Bomb initially. Did they really? Yeah, which was like, which was like basically, um, you know, that's their that's their album. That's the that's the big one. That's the one with the lips on the front. With the lips on the front, yep. yeah, the yellow and black one. Yep. They originally did that. They brought the, and and so they just have this history um, of just blowing bands up and being a part of it. And so they've been doing that for um, uh, since '08. And then I've been on board since January. Oh damn! Yeah, son. yeah, yeah. And what do you do for them? So I'm general manager. General manager. So generally manage everything, yeah, like yeah. all the bands, uh, shows, tours, stuff like that. So I mean, there's I mean multiple facets of of it all, but for the most part, the most bands have a booking agent. They have a manager. They they kind of put those things together. We have we have um, ways to weigh in on that and whatnot, but. Um, we were mostly the production of the music, manufacturing, making CDs, vinyls, getting them out, getting it on Spotify, trying to work at the playlist, trying okay. to get it to radio, trying to um, take the music and, and elevate it. So it's like it's kind of like having a team on your on your squad, you know, dude, I think that's sick. Wow. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a trip because, you know, in 2019, it's kind of like I said CDs and it's kind of yeah, like... Yeah, right, I, you know, I, yeah, I yeah. actually heard that. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you got to throw CDs in there because we still make them. We still make them. You know, people still want them. You know? Well, dude, vinyls are... Vinyls are making a huge comeback. Yeah. Well, they're a comeback, but also at the same time, I mean, it's really refreshing to see, uh, for me personally, being a hip-hop head, seeing like the Fugees or mm -hmm. Nas Ilmatic on vinyl. Yeah. And it's that sick because, you know, I remember also my mom like having like Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton fucking records Absolutely. Like, back in the day. Absolutely. It's it's really cool to be to see it kind of come back and to to where it's like those are the real the real numbers now, you know. But so as I was saying, though, like in 2019, CDs are they're dead. I mean, the, the retail industry, they're not dead, but they're just slowing, slowly going the way of streaming is is king right now. You yeah. Know? So. You know, like it used to be you, you press up all these CDs, you press up the vinyls and, and that yep. was the main component of, of what a label does. And I think in 2019, the, the question is, is like, what does a label do? How can it help you as a band? And because I mean, the main thing is, you know, you do this and you upload and you go through who you go through. Bands can do that themselves, too, with putting music out on Spotify, putting it out on SoundCloud. ITunes. SoundCloud, I mean, it, bands can be very independent. So it's kind of like, yeah. you know, how how is a label and what's the, the I don't want to say what the point is of it, but how is it how is it evolving in 2019, which I think is really cool to be a part of because it's like you have to reinvent like its, its purpose, its cause and whatnot. How yeah. to stay relevant and helpful to bands. Dude, I think that's completely true. I mean, this actually kind of ties in with how I've been feeling about where coffee's going. And I think... Um, I think in my profession in coffee, mm -hmm. customer service is number one, as it should be in any For service sure. industry. Absolutely. But like applying it to a record label, what you're doing in today's day and age where you have Spotify, all these other uh, platforms, streaming platforms that yeah. like are trying, you know, have millions upon millions of artists on them. You're providing either like a pathway for them mm -hmm. to get in there, to get onto Spotify or... You know, I would imagine it would be more like marketing as well. Social uh, media. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of things that we do. So I don't mean to say it's like, oh, yeah. what is a point of a label by any means? There's a lot of things that we do, but it's, it's trying to redefine what it is. What, what can you do that makes yourself valuable and why can a band do it themselves? And that's kind of like where we come in and we could provide marketing assets. We could provide help um, financially. We can provide, you know, guidance. You know, it's rad that Pepper is going out. They just put a new album out um, that they're touring and they're doing their thing. They're just as relevant as ever. So they, yeah, so yeah. you know, so they have they have that influence as well too. So we can try to help get bands get on tours. And well, they have them. the following. Well, there's that too. Yeah, there's dude. that too. Yeah. You, I mean, yeah. being so you're from Hawaii. Yep. Yep. Grew up in Oahu. All of the Hawaii boys that I've ever met over the years, if like my cousin specifically, my shout out my homie Rylan or my cousin Rylan Benigno, he was like, "Brah, Pepper's playing at Del Mar," yeah. and then the, I fucking so we see him, bro, and he was rocking, yeah. like took his hat off, head banging, just he's one uncle, you know, yep. just like cruising. Yep. Pepper has just, I mean, dude, I think their last album, um, Ohana, was released April 25th or so, like, but um, 
the I think it was the mayor on on Big Island declared it National Pepper Day. No way, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude! So like you know, they got the, it's it's rad, man. And growing up, dude, they played my senior year high school graduation party. Did they really? They did, and we raged the hell out of that. Like, dude. So it's cool to that's be what's up. involved. I know, I know. So it's cool to be involved with them at that. You know, from the fan level, and then you know, following them and seeing it to be onto this level where now. You know, we're helping to to grow the scene and the scene is just is healthy, you know, like yeah. the reggae is just crushing. And like from, you know, the American reggae to Jamaican reggae, there's a huge um, upsurge. And so it's it's cool to be a part. It's it's honorable to, or to, you know, it's humbling to be a part of. Dude, I saw I'm pretty sure Pepper played at the very first Cali Roots when High Roots was there, too. Or like they played. That was the third Cali Roots. Yes. Oh, the third? Are you sure? Yeah. I, do, I went to the well, very when, first well, one. Well, when High Roots played it, that was the third. Oh, maybe. Okay, maybe yeah, that's what yeah. it was. With Jay Boog and Soja. Jay Boog, yep, yep, yep. Dude, okay. That so was two days, yeah. 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 Dude, I remember that. That yeah. was, I mean, that was a, a really big show. Yeah. And there was a hell of people there. Yeah. So and now you're working with those dudes. Yeah. And I mean, Cali Roots is just, I mean, they just it's did blew ten, up. They just did their 10th year and that was way cool. Pepper played it this, this past year as well too. Oh wow. We were all up there in Monterey and yeah, it, Cali Roots has blown up and become, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's wild. Like, Dude, I mean, it's it, fun. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, they moved from when you went, they moved them. The, the main stage that was the main stage then is now moved to the bowl. So that stage still exists, but now the bowl, which is where, um, just like the the classic stage where Jimi Hendrix lit his guitar on fire, oh, is what? like is that is you know and like have you, you ever seen that video? Oh yeah, no, yeah, I've yeah. seen it. I was yeah, like, yeah. So they like that, put, that happened on that stage. That happened on that stage. In really? Mon- yeah, yeah. It's like the big bowl and the, it's like an arena. That's the main stage for Cali Roots now. Is is on that stage? So it's like oh shit. So it's do- it's do- it's dope. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's really interesting. Um, yeah, I think it was the Monterey Jazz Festival in like '69 or something like that. Really? Yeah. It's a legendary spot. There's like people that come through there all the time, and a lot. I mean, obviously, like Hendrix has been there. There's been all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Dude, that's such a fun place to go to a festival. I honestly love Monterey. I think it's it's so magical, sick. It's magical. Dude, yeah, that's when uh, you know Roger Hancock. Yeah, for sure. We were all in Cayucas, and mm-hmm. like we all rolled up together. Dude, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Did you ever go to his Cayucas house? I did not. No, but Cayucas is sick. Cayucas. Yeah. Hidden gem, bro. Yeah, for oh sure. Oh my god. But, um, so, I mean, from the sounds of it, you get to do cool shit like that. It's, that, that being part of the label. Dude, you to- it's, it's, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. Yes, absolutely. Um, we get to do cool shit. Get, definitely get to go to shows, but like, you know, and you, you go to shows, but it's, it's kind of funny because like, like Cali Roots, for instance, like I was there, but I was working and I was working. It's still like, a job. Dude, it's a job and it's yeah. a grind and it's like, you know, it's. It's a lot of work still, you know, yeah. you're on, you got to be on. And it's like, everybody is like drinking and smoking and having fun. It's like, nah, I got to I got to focus. I got to do, yeah. I got to do my thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a trip. Cause I always used to go to those shows and, you know, rage. And I mean, yeah, I played, I played Cali roots and rage yep. them. And then it's like, now I'm on this side and it's like, all right, I got to meet this guy. I got to talk to this guy. I got to like, you know, yeah. who, who manages these guys. Okay. I go introduce myself. Like. You know, I'm on that business mode when I get there where I'm like, nice. okay, you know, yeah. Do you ever find a time where you're able to um, kind of join, like, I don't want to say join the boys, but like once, I mean, if you're on the whole time while the show's going on mm-hmm. and you're the record label exec essentially or whatever. Yeah. The you, suits. The suits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You, <laughs> do you ever get to like kick back with the crew after the show is For done sure. and still enjoy the festivities? Yeah. Dude, I mean, even though I'm working it, I'm still enjoying it. It's, it's badass. You know okay. what I mean? Like, it's not like, it's to say like I'm working it is, has a connotation of like, oh, like I'm working it. It's like working it is badass, you know? Yeah. It's like, you're still going there. You're helping out on, you know, whatever, however you can help out on stage or side stage or in the crowd or whatever with merch, whatever it is. So absolutely. And then always, you know, like after the show is over, decompress like on the bus or something and say, you know, so it's, it, it, it's awesome. Yeah. Sick. It's rad. Yeah. I mean, for me, I love music. It's, it's absolutely essential to everything I do all day, every day. When you came in the house, I was listening to reggaeton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that, for me, it's like, 
I I have a thing where a pet peeve where if somebody's coming to the be a guest on the show and they come in the house and there's no music and it's just like stale air like I get super uncomfortable. I, there needs to be like a yeah. vibe already yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. set when you're coming into my house for sure because I want you to feel comfortable. Yeah, you know what I mean. For so sure. as like as important as music is to me, I love festivals. I love everything about music. Yeah, what's some of the perks like the best parts? I mean, not maybe not working, but just maybe people you've met. Or really cool experiences like traveling the world or anything like that for music. Uh, I mean, it's all. It, I mean, it's all kind of an experience, man. Like it's all kind of tied together. Like I don't know. I always like, um, hmm, like I don't know. Like you know, with Pepper, for instance, like being a part of their journey and being a part of their latest album. You know, having them be such an integral role. Like when Kona Town came out, I think it was O two. So for like, Kona Town is their for their I think it's their t- their second album, but it's like that's the album that kind of broke them. You know? Okay, um, and that came out in '02, and I mean I was a junior in high school, so it was like I remember going, you know, going surfing to those songs and driving up to North Shore and like oh, shit. you know like those were like imp- I don't know you, you're, the that's high school tight. music was like that was so impactful and like so, yeah you know to be a part of that and to be a part of their story and their journey and like working on their latest album that you know, is doing what it's doing. And it, you know, it went, it was three weeks, number one at, at billboard reggae. And I is, saw that on which Instagram. Is that was yeah. crazy. Yeah. And so it's, I mean, just to be a part of that, that success and that story and helping grow it. And then just to have this component be their label, which is like, you know, this is their, this is their baby. And to have, you know, to be able to, to, to run it essentially is, is a fucking honor. And that's rad, you know? And then yeah. from that is like, you know, you just get to meet, you know, everybody that is in the scene and you get to kind of do everything that you were doing previously on a bigger level, which is just, it's just awesome. It's a great opportunity for me and the family. And it's just, an, I mean, just furthers the music story that I've kind of been on. So it's pretty rad. Well, dude, yeah, that's, I mean, I wanted to even bring it back to you or like, you know, you're, you're driving, go surfing, you're having like mm-hmm. a, a personal, like a moment. This yeah. represents like moments in your life. Yeah. You're hearing these songs. Do you ever kind of maybe interacting with the band or hanging out with the band or even on traveling, you just have a moment. You're like, yo, what the fuck? Like, yeah. This is hella yeah. crazy. Well, like it's absolutely, sick, you know, abs- absolutely where I'm like, I don't ever want to like, I don't ever want to be in a position where I'm like becomes normal, you know, like where you play, where you're at bigger venues, you're doing bigger things and you're like, oh, I got to go to, you know, to this festival and then this festival and I got to do, you know, I don't, I don't ever want it to become like a job or like, like that, which well, you love what you do. Totally, absolutely. So, you know, so yeah, so it, it's, it's wild. And yeah. And I mean, definitely, you know, going to their shows and doing the things and then, and then with other bands as well too, like the whole, the whole, the whole thing is just, it's a trip, you know, it's crazy. I just feel blessed to be where I'm at and, and in the position that I'm in and to, to just, have the opportunity to to do it you know it's pretty rad dude i mean i feel super lucky man i guess I, yeah you know it's yeah like, hell yeah I, like it's, but, it, <laughs> but so i also sick. yeah but i also have done a lot to to be here too you know like so like it's a it's a combo of 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 work and luck that like i feel like has allowed me to be here but i but i'm always aware that it's like fuck super lucky super blessed super like super you know what i mean so yeah i mean well that that brings me to my next things like how you know what got you into music i mean you you're you're musically talented you're not just a dude who like manages bands you were musically talented when i first met you was you were in the band high roots yeah yeah which uh <laughs> i saw man. at the world beat center oh shit shout yeah. out to back yeah. in the day yeah, yeah, yeah. we were all under 21 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but drinking anyway yeah still <laughs> just raging them what show was that was that like tribal seats Dude, no, bro. This was like, I think you guys were like the headliners. Oh, at World Beat? Okay. I came down with my uh, roommate at the time. Shout out Alex Chen, if you ever listen to this. Nice. Uh, he, we were both from Fremont, and we were living together in LA, and I was like, bro, we, let's like go down there. We'll go see High Roots and all this nice. shit. I was like, this band is tight. They're my homies from Hawaii. Nice. Yo, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we, were, we went there, and I mean, like Lo, the girl who married yeah. us, was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, this Jenna, mm-hmm. Leslie, all of them were there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you, I remember Andre like threw out one of the CDs and it was like, I fucking caught it. Nice. Like in the middle of the fucking uh, the area. But I was just like, we can't drink here. It's kind of lame. But like we had brought a bunch of shit in the car. Yeah. So we were just like smoking blunts and getting all lit. And I just remember being out front like, oh, this is so sick. You know, nice. just like all the homies are here. Yeah. You know? that, was, that was really fun, man. High Roots was... was 
was awesome. That was a, it was great a good experience. time. That was a great experience, man. And that, that prepped everything, man. I mean, that's, I mean, there's so many different things that you can kind of go back to, but definitely high roots. <clears throat> Excuse me. We were, t- I mean, we were talking to law records when we were in high roots. Oh really? Were you? And that's how I kind dude, of dude full circle. Uh, dude, bro. That's, that's what, what I'm saying. Hell? Yeah. Yeah. So the general <laughs> manager at the time, this guy, Mark lay shout out Mark lay. He, he was the man. Love you brother. Um, and, uh, he, he met with us, we met with him and we were talking story and you know, it, it, it didn't work out. It didn't happen. And I mean, that's as, as deals with bands that happens all the time. You meet with bands and you know, sometimes they're ready. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they want something, some, it, it, whatever reason it didn't work out, you know? Yeah. Um, but I just kept in touch with him for the next, however long, um, just kind of had a, like a gut feeling that like, yo, no, I should, just, I, I just kind of like kept in touch with him. I would just hit him up and just say, Hey, how's everything? Like, you know, just what's popping, just, just yeah. What's popping. And just like, uh, I don't know, just kind of checking in, like, you know, what's going on, what's, what's going on in your world. Hope everything is good. You yeah. know, that kind of thing. And, um, I started working at a label, um, called blue Elon records out of LA uh, in Westwood area. And I was, and so when I started working there, I was like, yo, I'm like, I'm working here now. I'm, I got this label and I'm working with them. Like, let's meet up and just talk story. And like, cause, cause you know, from one label to another, you want to know what's working for you and your world and what's, you know, what's working in ours and you kind of shop trade secrets. And yeah. Whatnot. You're making like business friends. Yeah, exactly. Who, who do you guys go through? You guys, Oh, you guys have them for distribution. Like, Oh yeah, yeah. Like, Oh, we're going to go do this. And we're going to, you know, we did this for a pre-order. It was sick. It worked out really well. So, you know, just kind of talking, talking shop in that regard. And so we would just start, we start meeting up and just, you know, just start kept in touch. And then, um, that was awesome. And then I worked there for about three years and then he kind of called me out of the blue and was like, dude, I got these projects that are coming up and like, would you be interested in, in working on them? And, um, is this know, Neil? This is no, this is Mark. Okay. This, this is Mark. Mark. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. yeah. Yeah. Um, and Mark basically was like, yeah, I got these projects. You know, we got the new Pepper album where we, we just signed this band through the roots, the homies through the roots, which are, you know, Oh, what Brady? Out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Brady shit. guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we put their album out, Arrival, on June seventh. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So we'll get back to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get, get back, back to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll table that for a second. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> he called me. He's like, I got these projects coming up. He's like, I really like you. You know, like I, I'd li- I need some help on it. I'd, I'd like for you to, you know, would you be interested in in helping us out with some projects? I was like, fuck, absolutely. You know, like of course, like whatever you guys need. He calls me back later and was like, all right, change of plans. I'm gonna need you full time. Can you be general manager? And I was like. Oh, for law. Yeah. For law. I was like, what? Fuck, I'd love to like shoots. Yeah. Okay. Shoots. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, um, met with the boys, you know, you saw, um, Brett guys and Kaleo and then they were all, they all signed off on it. They were on board. And then that? that was in, that was in November, December, December. And then January uh, this past year, this past year. Oh, yeah. wow. And then January I started half time and then February started full time. Which, which, and then subsequently in December, we had a new baby. So yeah. It was like, so it was like new baby, new job. Yep. Booyah Kashan. You know, yeah, dude, it, it was, it was a lot. It was awesome. That's yeah. It was all at once. It's a, but that's the, I feel like that's the way you got to do it. Kind of like pull the bandaid off. Just go for it. Don't dude, even think twice. Just fucking charge it. Free, feet first, bro. Feet first. And it was a great experience. And, and, it, and now it's like, it, it, it what's cool about the guys what i love about it is it, i mean they feel like family from day one they've they've made me feel like family which is which is crazy because i feel like we we had kind of have known each other more or less because i've met yeah. i've met them through various, multiple times throughout multiple the times years. at festivals yep. and shows and i mean like so they played our senior year grad grad party like dude, i met them all fucking there crazy you know? yeah yeah like <laughs> dude. Met them at various places across the time so it's like i feel you know obviously, you've almost like grown up with them in in some yeah some off like we're on the same street but like a parallel street you yeah know? But we, so we're not a running yeah. adjacent or yeah whatever. and so like so yeah so it, it kind of feels like we're all family anyway and then That's and then sad. once i got on board they i mean it made me feel like family which has been rad so I might sound like a stupid Hallie right now, and I, that's okay. It's all right. We all are. <laughs> Where it, I mean, Kona Town. So I'm assuming that Pepper is actually from Big Island. From Big Island. Okay. Yep. You're from Oahu. Yep. It's all love. I mean, for everybody who's like, who, who might be listening, who doesn't, who's never been to Hawaii. I mean, if like on the islands, I guess, yeah, it's like if you're from the other island, like, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. But once you're on the mainland, it doesn't even matter it what island matter. you're from. Yeah. You're fucking, if you're from Hawaii, yeah. oh, Hawaii, you understand. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like, I mean, that was horrible. I'm sorry for yeah, everybody yeah. who's going to hate on me for that. But it. the the camaraderie yeah. and and the, the love, they just understand. Um, you know, where? tell me more about, like, where you grew up in Hawaii. Like, what, what and honestly, I, 
with that part, the caveat is what music, like what was the song that changed it for you that you wanted to be like, yo, I want to do music. Well, growing up in Hawaii and then the song that inspired you. I don't know if there was one song, but I do know there was two experiences in Hawaii that kind of like the first one, like my first concert I ever went to, well, I grew up in I am Manoa, Hawaii. So like kind of like over by the Aloha stadium side, like kind of right in the middle of Oahu. And for a little bit lived in Manoa. Um, and the first, the first concert I ever went to was in fifth grade and it was green day. At, yeah, yeah. Like right across the street from Aloha stadium. I think it was called Rob field at the time. And I was like, this is fucking amazing. Is you this know? like during Dookie time? This was like um, Insomniac, oh, so which is the album damn. after Dookie. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was it was still good album, just crushing. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I and like so I just remember being like, "Whoa, this is crazy." And and I mean, and I I always kind of reference this story, but like my parents, like I mean, I have two daughters. Like my parents let me go to this concert in fifth grade with like Sick. my my home, my other friend in in fifth grade. You know, I think his dad was there at some at some some place, but. Um, there was that one. And then in sixth grade, there was the big melee. Um, and that was on at Kualoa ranch on the North shore. A big melee. It's called the big melee. It was a, festi- it was a oh, festival. Okay, okay. And it had all kinds of people. And, um, that was on the North shores at Kualoa ranch. And like, I think long beach, the wall stars played it, uh, blink One Eighty Two, matchbox 20. Whoa. Uh, it's, it's like it's, <laughs> Whoa. It was a, a smorgasbord of, uh, of music. And it was, it was badass, but anyway, but at long, but so anyway, Long Beach Dub All Stars were playing at the time, and I don't know how familiar you are with Long Beach Dub. That's but Sublime without the lead singer. They formed it right after Brad died. Yeah, like kind of like to play to play to almost to pay homage to 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 Brad. And oh, was they it? Played, okay. Well, they played a bunch of Sublime songs, and then um, they kind of just like went on tour and, and kind of kept that that fire burning. And then they they wrote their own music and they put a bunch of their own albums out too as well. And they're all great musicians. But at that time, they were playing like mostly Sublime songs. And it was still Eric Wilson, who's the, the bassist from Sublime. And um, Bud Gaw was drumming. And I think Marshall Goodman was was like doing that. But so they played it. And that was crazy because I was just they were just playing Sublime songs. And I was a huge Sublime nut, you know, back at that time. And so anyway, after they played, I seen Eric Wilson just like smoking a cigarette on like the side of like, you know, outside in the festival. And I was like, I was in sixth grade. I went up to him. I was like, I was like, oh, Eric Wilson, like, bro, much respect. Like, I, you know, much big fan. I love what you've been doing. Love everything about it. And he was like, oh, thanks, man. I was like, dude, is there, you know, big fan? Any way I could, like, I don't know, cruise backstage or get back there? He's like, yeah. And he just like ripped off his his pass and just what gave me his the pass. Fuck? Wait, okay, so Eric Olson, you're saying Eric Wilson, Eric Wilson. Yeah. Who is that? Sorry. He's the bass player from Sublime. Oh, original he is bass the bass player from player. Sublime. Okay, he okay, plays okay, with Sublime okay. with Rome right now. But okay. he was the original, like, I mean, he's just a fucking legend. You know? Okay. See, so I'm just yeah. yeah, yeah. Just fucking legendary. Okay, like, okay. So he gives you his respect. Gives me his gives me his pass, basically Dude. his artist pass, you know? Like and I was like I was like, bro, and they're like, I was like, oh fuck, like, okay, like, thank you so much. Like, so and he just he just kinda like and then that was it. Just let me go. So then so then I just immediately went and took it and went on stage, like at the, whatever band was playing at that time. Like I don't remember what band was playing, but I just remember it was like I kinda wanted to see where this pass would take me. So like I, so then I just immediately like went on stage and was like, bro, this the pass lets me get on stage. And so then I like went there and then I was like, Oh fuck, I'll look back over there because like there was where all the tents where all the bands were hanging out. I was like, let's see if the pass goes back there. So then I went back there and I was kind of like just wandering around to all the different bands' tents. So I was like, You're in sixth grade. Sixth You're grade. like 12. Dude. I, yeah, I think I was like 14 because I was a little Four. older. I, I, uh, maybe 13, 14. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure? I, gradu- I graduated high school when I was 19. So like I, oh, like, I so you're like a late baby. So I was, a, like I was, I was, I was a March baby, but my okay. parents, I started like a, I did like a pre preschool thing and I always could have skipped a grade and I was like, nah, I'm good. Like I like being the oldest, oldest guy in the group. Okay. You know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I was like one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I, maybe 12, 13, something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, and Again, my parents let me go. There's no adults. Like I just was wanted there, was there with like two other homies and like sick. Yeah, like and so then I went back there and then met like Long Beach Double All Stars guys and this band Homegrown at the time who I was like I'm a big fan of like they sing a song Surfer Girl. Dude, my I surfer feel like I've girl. heard Homegrown. Yeah, they're from I think they're from Orange County, but they were okay. like a punk. They kind of had the ska kind of mostly mostly punk, but yeah, they were a cool band too. But anyway, so I, I was going to all these things, and then I ended up at like at Matchbox Twenties tent, and like Rob <laughs> Rob Thomas was there, and he was like, <laughs> what? 
he was so cool dude he was like he's like oh right on man like glad you're a fan like right on it's great to meet you he's like hey are your friends here he's like yeah he's like, you want to you want to get them back they need passes i was like sure so he gave me passes and went and got my friends back but are yeah. you serious swear to god, i swear to dude. god swear to god yeah yeah <laughs> and then and then like one of the guitarists i think his name is adam like like we were just called my house and like left a voicemail on my on my answering machine, you know, like we got your son Paul Milbury here. He's uh he's really messing up and blah blah blah. And he's like, ah, just kidding. He's here, but he's good. And just wanted to say hi or something like that. Just like a bunch of, like a fucking what? Like what the fuck? Did, I was did, like, the, did the lead singer Matchbox Twenty just yeah, call us? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, dude. And so that was where I was like, this is fucking crazy. Like that yeah. was in sixth grade, and I remember after that show specifically, it was like dude, I really want to be involved in this industry. I really want it. Like it was just, it just felt very freeing. Like shows in general have always felt very like, I don't know, like you can, you can do anything. You can like, I don't know. You know, you get that vibe where you get all amped. Like, dude, ah, yeah, fucking, I can scrap anyone or I could like, I can jump over that fucking tree can, over I there. I can smoke like, weed back here yeah. and ain't nobody saying shit. Exactly. I can do whatever <laughs> I want, man. Life is perfect. Like nothing else matters, but right now. I got you know? these beers. Yeah. The homies are here. Yeah. So <laughs> dude, that's how I feel every yeah, time. Yeah, me too. So, so anyway, so it was, so that was kind of like the moment. And then, and then from there, we just like, once any shows would come like to Hawaii, like Warp Tour or, yes. you know, any, any bands would come to Hawaii, we would go to all the shows and. Now, being right. so involved in music, did you, I mean, I'm sure you've listened to a bunch of different things, but do you ever find yourself branching out from maybe like uh, punk or ska or reggae? Do you ever do like funk, any type of uh, even dance music that might be out now, hip hop, whatever? Definitely. And not as much as I should. Like I kind of, I, I definitely, like one of the things I noticed about like even Spotify's like algorithms. Yeah. Like they kind of keep you in a lane almost like if you listen to the daily mixes or you listen to the oh, like, yeah. you know, and so like I'm trying the same songs. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of do like discover weekly a lot to try to, to listen to, to other stuff. But yeah, I definitely, absolutely. Like I listen to other stuff, but I, punk and, and reggae for sure are, are like the, the bread and butter for me. Like All I, right. I, I love that stuff, but I was just listening to like Jamiroquai on the way here. Oh, sick! Like, he's got a super reggae song that I didn't even know was on like the '96 album with uh, uh, what was the big Canned hit? Heat? Yeah, Canned Heat. Yeah, Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I'm always virtual trying to, insanity. Virtual too. insanity. That's the one. Oh, yeah, that was one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so always trying to branch out, but like, and this is again, this is gonna sound like I'm complaining about work, but it's <laughs> not. But it's like I, it's just it's so time consuming. Like I, like I have so much music to listen to with not enough time, you know, like just, I have, there's so many albums I need to listen to. I need to listen to that album. I need to listen to this one. I need to listen, you know, like for artists on your label, artists on the label and just that are the music that's coming out to kind of say like what's going on in the scene, like in general, just, um, you know, and then friends that, that are sending me music, like, Oh, you got to check these guys out. These guys are, these guys are crushing. You should check them out. Or like, um, or, you know, more, or just friends that are putting out music, you know, like check out my whatever I'm working on. And so, like, there's just a lot of music to listen to. And then also, too, when like when we're when I'm working on on a project like in and in an album cycle, like I kind of want to immerse in the in the albums to like really like, you know, if I'm going to try to market it and sell it, like I you want to understand, wanna understand it. it. I want to yeah. know the soul about it. Like, well, how, what was the songwriting? What was the like, you know, all of that stuff. It makes you feel some type of way. Exactly. And yeah. what is that way? What is yeah. that way? What is that way related to? Like, where did yeah. it come from? Who, you know, and like what, you know, is it, are they synth samples or is it, was it, a, you have a horn section in there? Like, you know, like, what, is it all originals? Is it a loop? Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. And so like, that's, that's the kind of thing where it's like, I, I, there's so much music to listen to with, with not enough time. Oh, dude, all <laughs> I mean, you honestly can just listen to music on end. And I totally. love, I love it. Cause I'll, dude, some days I wake up, I'm like, oh, I'm feeling hella country today. I want to hear some country for like a couple songs. Yeah. Yeah. Or a little while, you yeah, know? Yeah. And then like some days, depending on what I'm feeling, I'll t- like, I'll feel this. I've been feeling this one song right now. I got to tell you, since I'm, we're not fully filming this right now, I actually could do this because I never actually get to use my phone. Right. But I will tell you this song because, dude, the song that I heard, it is, it's called uh, Fool for You by S- Snow a la Egra. Egra by Fields. Never heard this lady before. It just came on. And the song, as soon as I heard it, bro, for me, I was, yo, what was that? I needed to like write it down. Yeah. I need to make sure I listen to it on loop for probably like three or four times. And then I put my headphones in 
and then I listen to it again. Yeah. It's like I get obsessed it's, instantly. Yeah. It's crazy that music does that and that it has that effect on people. And that's what I think ultimately got everybody that's in the music industry in the industry in general, or Dude. even like just a fan of music in general is that feeling, which is like, it's crazy. Cause you know, it's, it's super trippy too, because there's music that does that for me. And I always trip out. Like, is it just me or does it, is no. there a lot of people, you know, like, or, or I mean like on specific songs. No, like, yeah, no, I know. Exactly you know? What you like, mean, yeah. And like, did it do any, Did it do that for anybody else? And like, it's, it's weird though, because like, like Kona town, for instance, like we were talking about that, like, that album will be forever grained in me because of the time and place it was. It represents that, mm-hmm. like that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that innocence or whatever it is. Well, yeah. Like, it's associated you know? with <laughs> how you grew up, how you learned, totally. how you understood the things that you were like, it's nostalgic in a sense that it takes you back. Yeah. You know for I mean? sure. Which is another crazy component of, of just music. You know, it's like a, a, a sense that, you know, like a smell, like, oh, fuck that. Like, that's like grandma's cooking. Bro. Man. Like, <laughs> have you ever heard the Kenny Chesney song? I go back. Uh, I don't know. He's I like, I go back to a two tone short bed Chevy, like <laughs> you know, taking the first love out to a levy, like. But he's like talking about smells and other yeah. things, everything that you're saying. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, he he put it into a song. Yeah, yeah. And it was I like that's that. exactly what you're talking yeah. about because that's why I like that song so much. I'm like, yeah. oh, dude, like, sure, he's talking about some shit I really don't understand, but right. it sounds good and right. I can relate to the message. Heat, 100%. You and know that's what what's mean? crazy about songwriting in general. And like, that's where as being on the side that I'm in now where I've kind of dove in further into, you know, like the songwriting structure and the like, you know, you look, look at a Beatles song and it's like, mm-hmm. what did the Beatles do? They had like a, they had a verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, out. And it was like a two, two yeah, minutes, two and 30 minutes, 30, 30, 30 yeah. second song. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you start looking at it like, fuck, that was, that was genius. You know, like super easy. <laughs> well, super easy, but it was also, I mean, it's super easy, but also very like, Oh, for them. I just meant like they were just knocking, knocking. Oh yeah. Yeah. Out, yeah. Like, super. Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say there's like in that super easy, like it's so easy. Like, fuck, why let, let's just do it right now. That's all it is. But it's like, it's so it's so like, it's just genius in that little bit of time, which I, I just have started to really kind of not just started, but have spent more time like, fuck, that's a, like, I like what they did there. Like, Oh, they, they changed that up. And that made me, you know, like I don't, whatever it did. It like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I like that. You know, dude, that's how I fuck. Yeah. I love the Beatles too, by the way. Yeah. Huge, huge. I mean, I could you not, you know, I've heard some, some pretty good arguments about why people don't I've legit. Like what? I, dude, this homie Dom DeLuca, he's this dude. Uh, he used to be one of like a VJ mm-hmm. at Headbangers Ball and MTV like back nice. in the day. And he was just like, "Their shit's whack." Like, just tell me how it is. But also, he had like some really good music taste though too. Yeah. So, but he was like one way or the other about the Beatles, and it's like you either love them or you hate them. Sure. And for me, I was like, dude, hell yeah, I love them. My brother loved them. My mom showed me yeah. their stuff. And for me, it was like, oh, this is. I I feel like when I started understanding the Beatles that it was, it sounds so lame and I've never said this out loud. Uh (laughs) This is honestly, I think about it though is like, it's the Beatles transition from like young Liverpool kids to like hippie to old guys. Like you literally have watched a band grow old. It's like literally it's representation of life in a really weird abstract way. Yeah. And you know what's even crazy though about them is that is that that transition happened in like eight years and then they were done. Yeah, it was like I think it might even have been less than eight years that they put all that all that music out and then they broke up and they all went solo, and then that like so the Beatles as the Beatles that that was it was only like a six or eight year experience Dude. and they just fucked up the world in the process. Dude, like, <laughs> and they fucking grew up so fast. Totally. Like, I've seen it happen. My homie Chris Russell, who was here the other day, he's 22 now, 22, 23, pro skateboarder. And I've known him since he was like, yeah, basically 12 or 13. And so I've seen him grow up, but also he's lived a crazy life that I don't understand. Only a professional athlete of his caliber can really understand. It's like right now he's in France. Wow. It's like, you know, every other week this fool's killing it yeah. and traveling the world and he's lived a life. And it's like, I see him now. I'm like, dude, you are like a grown ass man. And he's like way older than he, his years. He's still super young. And it's like, he's wise in, ex- in life experience. Dead, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I yeah. mean, that's the only thing I can even like kind of relate that to the Beatles in the sense where it's like, dude, they fucking, 
I, I mean, like I've heard stories about like um, Bob Dylan showing uh, the Beatles like what acid was and like all these other things or like when they went to I- I- India or whatever like yeah, that. India, and they yeah, yeah. The Maharishi. Getting, I yeah. Think, yeah. Dude, it's just sick. Yeah, it's super so rad. sick. I love it. Yeah. And then, I mean, dude, you look at like when they were, when they first came to the U.S. and like people were fucking at the airport, like yelling, losing like, their minds, losing, losing their minds. Like the, the like really conservative Christians were like, they're like, you know, ah, they're doing all these things. Dude, have people you tripped out on them? Do you have any type of um, kind of relatable stories with Pepper? Like it maybe, maybe not globally, but if like you go to the island and like people are like, what the fuck? I mean, not like that. Nah. Not like not like that. But they, I mean, definitely their fans are like super hardcore fans, and super. It's, and they're like, I mean, and they're the shit. And they have been through with them, through all kinds. And um, definitely, like you, you see familiar faces over a lot of shows, you know. Yeah. But but you know, I don't know if it gets that crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm it. sure. I'm sure they could tell you though. I'm sure oh, they could yeah. tell you some stories that are like fucking gnarly. But I, I haven't been around long enough to tell you like. Bro, this shit went down. Like, like guaranteed, though, guaranteed though, they have, they have some. Oh, I bet, I bet they've been as long as they've been around. I mean, yeah, twenty two years. Twenty two years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How the fuck do you do play that long? They're, they're, I mean, dude, they're, they're. I mean, they're just awesome people, and they're awesome. The they, vibe is they, they feed off each other. The, they, yeah, and they're all genuine and they're authentic, and it's Sick. just like it's just it, it's it's real, which is what I think is what. You know, I think that what really makes them, you know, also have had the career that they had is, is because they're so real and they're so they're they're such nice people that like everybody loves them. They're like the, you know, b- other bands love them. People want to work with them. And, yes. like, it's just that kind of thing where, you know, it just they've they've just been really rad. They've kept that Hawaii spirit alive. Yeah. For 22 years. Keeping you know, the major Aloha labels alive. And, yeah. Dude. Major labels to their own label and to, to now. Yeah. Dude, fuck Which is yeah. rad. And again, like, it's just cool to be a part of it, to like hear them talk about the various, you know, whatever they did and, you know, have done in the past and then to like be a part of it now and strategizing with them and like what we should do. And it's just, it's, it's cool, man. It's rad. What other bands? So we discussed through the roots yep. and what we can talk about them for a second. Yeah, so for is sure. Is there other bands as well? Yeah. So, I mean, I think about right now we have eight or nine, maybe 10 active bands and then 14 um, that are on the roster and cattle our catalog and whatnot um, through the roots. We just um, did on June 7th uh, an album called arrival, which is killer. It's really good. I don't have you heard it at all. I haven't. You gotta check it out. It's, okay. it's good. It's good, man. Like they, um, they definitely push themselves outside of their normal um, like place that they're in and, okay. and are, are just different sound synth samples and um it's good. It's really good. Yes. Um, so that was June 7th. And then just last Friday, we had this band called Cashed Out. They're from Orlando, Florida. Sick. Um, they just released an album called Undercover. And that was mixed by Paul Leary. You know who Paul Leary is? I don't. The, the, he's the guy who did uh, Sublime Self Title. He produced that album. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's oh, like, wow. Yeah, I know. So like when we were emailing with him, like because he was doing the mixes and we emailed him back, I was like, I was geeking out hard. I was Super like, hard. I was like, dude, fucking Paul Leary like created this reggae scene in some regards, I mean, sublime created this scene, you know, and he's the one who made this album that like, like, fuck that changed album. The course that of album that changed. Music, yeah. I mean, that album is like massive. I mean, that's like, that's a mainstream reggae album, you know, like, dude, do you hear every one of those songs being sung in OB by every single troll? Don't, <laughs> All the time, right. sure. And you I know mean, you've made it. If dude, trolls that's are what I'm saying. <laughs> that I mean, like I know Sublime, but then it's like if the trolls don't got nothing else to do, and all they could sing is "Loving Is What I Got." Yeah. Like, yo, that, yeah, son. It was I, a huge. It was. I mean, that album was, was influential. Ma- it's super influential. Yes. And he was, and he was the mastermind behind that. Um, he mixed this album. He was also in the band Butthole Surfers, and uh, <laughs> and which which is legendary in itself. I've too. never heard that name before, but I will look them up. Check now. them out, dude. Butthole they were le- Surfers. Butthole Surfers, dude. Yeah, right. you've never heard Butthole Surfers. No, oh, bro. You'll okay. dude. I still look for new music. I don't care what genre it is. is. It just needs to sound good. This is gonna be new old music. This right, is I'm like down. mid nineties that, that they were, ba- but they were huge. They were on a major label, and he did a bunch of stuff. Um, he, he did a slight stupid album. He did Peppers, Pink Crustaceans in 08. Um, and uh, he mixed this album. And then uh, 
and it's it's a killer album you know like that i was telling you about that songwriting component greg is their lead singer and he just has that knack of writing a really good song from sick from pre-chorus to chorus to bridge it's just it's it's all there does he do it like like does he um write music as well with it or do they does he like bring in his lyrics and he does the things and then like he comes with the vibe i'm not sure how their specific songwriting process goes but um i know he he kind of handles a lot of the lyric components and and the songs that he sings at least um but yeah he's but they just there he he can write a killer song he wrote a lot of songs with ballyhoo and um some other bands and stuff so that album came out on last friday and then um we also have uh, this woman, her name's Vana Leah. She's um, from the East Coast. She plays uh, ukulele and is just crushing. She's Sick. rad. She's rad. Yeah, she just um, uh, played two shows with Soja, and like jumped up and sang like three songs with them. What? Yeah. So that was really cool. So the, the, the label, yeah, the label's healthy, man. It's cool, man. It's sick. It's, yeah, dude, yeah. that's sick. So when you when you're talking about, say her name again, Vana Leah. Vana Leah. Shout out. Yeah. Um, she is playing ukulele, so I'm assuming it's just, is it just her with the uke, like so, singing? So she kind of, okay, so she, the band, as the band, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen her full band iteration. Like, I've seen her tour as, as her by herself playing ukulele, but I know for these Soja shows, she had a full band. So I'd, I don't know if, if it's guitar and she's not playing ukulele or if she is, but, um, it, uh, she, a lot of her songs are very ukulele centric, which is which is rad. Which is this, it's cool. Is it like mellow vibes or does yeah, she play like, like Jake, um, like Jake Shimabukuro? Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. It's not that. Yeah, it's not that crazy. It's, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 like chords and and yeah. singing and singing along. Yeah, crushing. Jake Shimabukuro though is like, I mean, that guy's like a dude, insane. Have you ever heard him play "My Guitar Gently Weeps"? Absolutely. That guy's nuts, Jeez, man. Louise. Yeah, dude. He used to be in a band called was the band called uh pure heart i think was the band um in hawaii he used to play in like a, a jawaiian kind of band a jawaiian che- yeah what che- is jawaiian like jawaiian is like the kind of that that uh style of music i've never heard this never term, heard, dude, dude wait, how have you wait. never heard jawaiian dude. with Le- leslie and jawaiian <laughs> Bro, okay, wait. Please tell me what Jawaiian means. It's it's like a style of music. It's like it's like ja it the in Hawaiian. It's like Jawaiian. So like, is that the island reggae? Yeah, it's that island reggae sound. Yeah, like three plus and natural vibrations and like, oh, you know, ten fuck. feet. And Dude, natty vibes. Natty vibes. Natty vibes are yeah. where it's at. Natty vibes are where it's at for sure. Um, but yeah, so Jawaiian, he played in this band. I think it was Pure Heart was the band, and like, dude, go listen to that album because mm-hmm. it's a killer album. And then you just hear him just doing what just he shedding. does. And you're like, holy fuck. Like, this guy is nuts. Like, yeah. you could tell, like, at that at that level, like, fuck, this guy's going to go on and just crush. Yeah. You know? He's going to be doing yeah. solo shows. He's going to be doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah. He, so that that's a good one. Pure Heart. I think I think that's their name. But, uh, yeah. we'll but jo- Jawaiian, though. Yeah, that's a... That's Jawaiian, a, dude. Can't believe you haven't heard that term before. I've heard that term. Yeah. Dude. Jawaiian, man. <laughs> I mean, I imagine that. Ja in Hawaiian. <laughs> ja Hawaiian. <laughs> but, okay. We never, you never answered, though, uh, growing up in, o- in Oahu. Mm-hmm. You said that you grew up out there. Yep. And then, so what got you into music? Like, was it just those shows that you know you wanted to be a part of it, so you picked up an instrument? I mean, I think, yeah, fuck, man. I think, honestly, I think you can probably bring it back to my older brother. Like, I mean, he played guitar, and I, like, kind of always saw him playing guitar. I was like, fuck, I want to play guitar, too, and... You know, and then when they all went to college, I, I remember like distinctly, I remember rating their like music, like, you know, like back in the day, we all had, you know, all the CD cases, oh, you know, yeah. like rating the CDs and be like, fuck, this all, and then listen, you know, you have nothing but time when you're a fucking kid, like listening to this album, oh, it's not, that one's junk. Oh, oh, fuck, this is good. What is this? You know, and like diving into yeah. that and doing, I remember spending significant time going through their music collections and, and like deciding what I liked and what I didn't like. Sick. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, I think, I mean, ultimately, I think I'm very blessed because I had older brothers that were doing things and saw what they were doing. And I was like, oh, yeah, I like that. I don't like that, but that's fucking cool. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and they yep. went to shows too. And, like, you know, and then, my, like I said, my brother played guitar. And so, then at an early age, I wanted to play guitar. And then it was like, all these, con- you know, and so then it was just kind of like a domino effect from there. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, in like sixth grade, around that time, fifth grade, sixth grade, 
like when I went through all their, their booklets, like, you know, like how in the like CD liner notes, people, bands would put like, drop us a line, like write to us or whatever, bro. I went through like, I, it was, I mean, obviously I had a lot of time, but I went through like probably like 15 to 20 of these albums and just wrote down all the addresses and wrote a very similar letter to every one of these bands. They're like, yo, what up? My name is Paul, like big fan, like. You know, love what you guys are doing, like out here in Hawaii. If you ever want to play in Hawaii, like I got a floor for you to crash on. You know, da da da. Like some bands wrote back, some bands just sent like zines. You know, like remember or back stickers, in the, or stickers, stickers, right? stickers. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. I mean, I would always get shit in the mail. Like, like oh, they signed me up for this, so they added to this. And like, uh, the coolest one was uh, the lead singer from Real Big Fish, Aaron barrett i think was his name did you say real big fish yes oh I did. my god bro. yes yes Shut the fuck yeah up. I yeah yeah I okay a big real big fish fan um he wrote back a couple times dude and sent me like his side project a tape of his side project this band called the scholars what? and like and like full-on like it was it was right sent me stickers sent me real big fish stickers sent me this tape yeah this is like a side project i'm working on like blah blah, blah. Like super rad you know like and dude yeah and then it was i ended up meeting him later like like a year or two later at this barbecue it was like this this radio station in hawaii called radio free hawaii and like they had a, a barbecue that they were hosting and he ended up he got me like one of those like back in the day they had they had eight by 10 photos, the black and white ones. That's like what bands always had to like, you know, have a press kit and they'd, you'd have to have a press kit and you'd send the press kit out or whatever. And it's like, they all, every bands always had an eight by 10 black and white photo. Like that was like the standard. So they had the eight by 10 and the whole band signed it. And they yeah. Made like album. black and white photo. Yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. Like that was like the standard. And so he got me that and they all signed it. Like, and, and then he gave me the album, the new album. It was like, turn the radio off, which was like the album, the album that had sell out. So like oh, it was just cla- it was just classic though like you so know they I- were in basketball too absolutely yeah fuck yeah dude I was dude a huge real big fish fan yeah that's so sick yeah 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 and like so they wrote back like blink blink wrote back like a uh, blink one eight two wrote back like a uh, I think I got signed up for like the blink one eight two mailing list and it was like a standard form but then they sent me stickers and they sent me like when Dude Ranch came out they sent me an advance like um, three song demo like not demo but it was three so- it was like a, a three song like it had damn it it had i think i don't i don't know what the other two were but like they sent that and i got, I got that in the mail ahead of that was album. it on tape it was on tape yeah yes. <laughs> and here, here's how much like how much of an idiot i was i took the tape and like you remember how back in the day you could put the tape over the tape and you could record over oh well yeah you had like if you had that um that dual stereo you could like repress yeah. record and record on another yeah tape. but like yeah. if if some if you like if you bought a tape from a store you just put tape over the like the side and you could like you could record over like a dr dre tape or something oh or, like, what i didn't whatever. know that yeah, yeah dude like so i've never heard of this <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so like it was like you know you have the tape and you have the top part and there's like you know the little things right there you like you turn the fucking thing and mm-hmm. if you put tape over these like two little holes right there you could record over whatever was on there and so like oh, a fucking whoa. idiot like i was i recorded over like that other side because it was two sides were the same songs like side yeah. a and side b were both the same three songs i'm like well fuck i you know like that's some good tape space so then i like put my <laughs> own songs on side b or Made some shit like a tape. fucking idiot you know like looking back i was like damn i wish i still had that tape that would have uh, been pretty that rad. was my next question is like do you still have that no tape? i don't have any of that shit like yeah dude, that's a, dude ranch is like a really good album dude too. i totally that really was, good album. that was great i mean that was pre travis barker days and that yeah was, that was cheshire cat like and dude uh, ranch dude yeah. ranch was their big like the big one and yeah so 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 then that was kind of like around that same time of like going to that festival and going to those shows like i kind of like really like spent like a couple summers fucking spending some time in music reading liner notes and you know i don't know just dude kinda, it sounds like it's forever throughout your life been like um this is like a meant to be it's a common thread dude yeah it's weird it's That's really weird sick. My dad, so like my dad and i always talk about like like so when like when i got when you know when mark called me about this job i called my dad i was like dad dude fucking i might work with pepper guys like what like you know like <laughs> all we, all, yeah 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 for sure it's like what like because I've always had these kind of weird experiences and like that, like that Eric Wilson story about him giving me his past. Like I haven't met him again, but I know that I will <laughs> say, I know I'm going to meet him again and I'm going to tell him, bro, like, bro, like you're not going to believe this, but like back in sixth grade, but you know, like just shit like that, where it's kind of like, it's been a common thread and it was like, 
in Hawaii, we would go to all these shows and then we moved to the, like, you know, came to college and we we're still playing guitar and still going to shows. And then it was kind of like slowly, like you start to kind of know the people and then you slowly kind of, kind of, and then you kind of change from being like, Oh my God, like that's fucking, that's the lead singer to like being like, ah, that's the homie. That's the fucking homie, John. Yeah. You know? that's like, the homie right yeah. There. yeah you're on you the kinda, first name basis. And then you kind of, yeah. and you just kind of get like, it just be kind of comes, I don't know. Like you, you, and that's where I was saying, like, there's that balance between finding, like, being the fan and being the professional and, like, trying yeah. to find that balance. Cause yeah, I, of course. Because, you know, even, like, Pepper Guys and, and any bands that are successful, they're all super big fans of other bands, you know? Well, that's, I mean, it goes back to exactly what you've been talking about. It's, yeah. It's, it's the love for music. Absolutely. Which and, is why they got, they started playing music in the first place, why they're doing yeah. whatever and, like... That's um, well, they're creating, man. They're yeah. fucking. That's what you get to do yeah. for a living yeah. is like create these things that are gonna make people associate with their past yeah. or make them feel some type of way or just create amazing memories to for those sure. songs. For sure, yeah, it's cool to be a part of and and helping bands take that creation process and help them try to grow it and help their careers grow and help in like a lack of a capitalism term help them sell it yeah <laughs> which is ultimately like what we have to do well, as yeah, a record label that's to. the business is we have to sell records we have to listen streams we have to you know it has to be profitable like so figuring out a way to monetize all of that is kind of the you know the big question and and but at the same time you know trying to monetize things that are important and try to you know support art that is that is you know quality and that is you know i like i like how you refer to it as art yeah what well, is tight. yeah it is that's i mean up. you know and that's that's i mean that's what it is and that's what i mean all these bands like they're out there putting their like no matter what size band or whatever like i have a lot of respect for people that are putting themselves out there because you know like I mean, with the internet there's a lot of room for criticism there's a lot of room Always. for fucking haters there's a lot of oh well I could uh, you know take some guitar lessons, bro, or like you know yeah, like there's that kind. Of, no, totally, but yeah. I mean there's that kind of stuff, and people are constantly putting themselves out there. So like yeah. I have a lot of respect for creators. Of I always used to say like when people were like, "What kind of music you listen to?" Like, oh, I listen to you know anything but country, and it's like I just kind of am am stoked on whatever people are creating now. Yeah, what are they doing that they're passionate about? Because they are passionate about it, and that they're putting in the work to do it, which is that that is rad you know i couldn't agree more i yeah. mean honestly fuck it dude i love music yeah period that's that, that's that's all encompassing for sure if i can feel that passion of that person sure. whether it's a country artist a fucking edm dj right 70s fucking classic rock or like some early hip-hop whatever right you feel that passion from somebody and it gives you chills yeah when you get like what you were talking about earlier you were saying that you know it, do people feel what you're feeling? Yeah. When you listen to that right. music, bro, right. I'm sure as much as you love music, I'm sure there's been songs that have hit you when you like, you cried. Yeah. You get chills or yeah. just like you're going through some shit and this song, it just like speaks to you. Yeah. That totally. for me is like, bro, that's what it's all about. Totally. Dude. Totally. And yeah, man. And you're just putting people out, you know, put, putting it out there and going for it. And then it's like, you know, I, I have respect for that. And then no matter what, industry people are in just kind of like you know like you know it's not a the the job is not a standard nine to five you know it's not nah. a like you clock in and then you clock out and you go home or or whatever it's your it's kind of all the time for better or worse which is just kind of the, that's the nature of the business you know if like if we're if we're doing something and there's a you know something comes up at 2 a.m or 5 a.m or something like that like kind of almost always like oh fuck can I, can I deal with this in three hours or am I got fuck I got I, I deal with this now you know like it, there's kind of that oh, you shit, know really? like, like well, you kinda, yeah yeah you're kind of like, you size it up you know you're like oh yeah. fuck oh yeah yeah okay fuck I got that later you know like oh no I'll size it, you know oh, yeah, it's kind of, of that that whole thing and like I you know part of me when I was in like because when I was in the when when I was in high roots I was always working a job that. I was ready to quit at any moment, like because it's yeah. just like whatever's gonna come up, I'm, I'm gonna. You were quit. a guitar player. Were you a guitar? play guitar and bass? Bass, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, and so while I was doing that, like, you know, you kind of then are just working jobs that are just fucking jobs, you know, like just they're just they're just things, you know, they just yeah. take up time or whatever. It's just to to get the necessities. Yeah, exactly. Um, and like, there's definitely something comforting about being able to go to work, and then when you leave work 
work is done and it's there. It's at home. It's at, it's at work. It's there. You yeah. Know? I'm out of work. Fuck. I don't give a shit. I got nothing to do until I'm back at work. Yeah. Definitely work is everywhere now and is everything now. So like that, there's that, like that, that is a trip and that is, you know, trying to find that balance because, you know, because it can consume you for sure, especially with like notifications of emails and stuff like that. You know, it's like oh my God, yeah. trying to find that balance. I mean, I work from home and I work from coffee shops a lot. So it's like, you know, my workplace is like our house. So it's like, you know, when I'm in my house with the kids home, it's like, all right, I'm not working right now. Like I got to turn that off, you know? So it's, yeah. it's, it's so, you know, gotta be Papa Dukes. Gotta be Papa Dukes. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's a, it's a trip, you know, but it's got, it's awesome though. And it's been a great experience, like trying to, to figure that out. And Michelle's been so rad about just the whole thing she's always been like you know i had a job that was you know you know that i was a part of you know the last label that i was at had a had a huge staff and you know all this stuff and you know at law it's it's kind of me and the guys and she was always just like just so you're wearing many hats you're wearing, i'm wearing so every hat dude. Yeah. i'm wearing every hat like from fucking daddy to fucking everything you know that's yeah. sick though it's rad dude and it's i mean it's it's amazing like it's it's a great experience but like there's a lot of unknowns that come with that and a yeah. lot of whatever but michelle's always been learn do it. on the job do it yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of learning on the job i mean thankfully a lot of a lot of what i'm doing you know has been learned um, over the over the years. over the experience yeah, yeah. of what i'm doing and i mean obviously there's always on the job learnings that you have um but anyway she's always been super supportive of I that's right of, yeah for sure because it's Fuck, it's, you know, it's kind of a crazy industry, you know? Yeah. Retail has gone away. Physical sales has gone down. Like, you know, it's it's a trip, you know? Well, that's one thing I wanted to ask you about is, like, with something, with so many social media platforms, and we mm-hmm. were talking about this before the podcast even started, you were asking, like, you know, what platforms am I using for the podcast? Yeah. Well, with Spotify being such a big thing, Tidal yeah. or YouTube or just whatever, yeah. whatever platform, pick it. Do you... Are you analyzing more data now? Are you getting yeah. numbers about streams and how many per like, you know, that ties back to the artist and how how much money they're getting per stream per download? Like, yeah, is it broken down to streams and downloads? Is it yes? So yes and yes. So okay. like, I mean, you can, I mean, every stream is kind of around point zero zero fourth of a cent. Is what, it's kind of what that comes down to. Oh, so like, God. yeah, I know. So I mean, if you want to like monetize of, of where it's at, like, yeah, each stream is about 0. 0.004 of a cent. Um, and then a download is like, you know, if it's 99 cents, then, you know, I think iTunes takes whatever they take and then you're probably distributor. 50. I don't think it's 50. I think it's less than that. But, um, but you know, it depends on who you go through. Like if you go through, I through TuneCore or through wherever else they're going to take their percentage and then you get, whatever so let's you know you call it 60 cents out of a dollar or something like that but like but for a stream yeah it's 0.004 i mean i think it's something around and it depends on if it's like a premium subscription so like if you have a spotify account and you stream music your streams are worth more to the artist than if you have a free account so like there's that Uh, and then apple music pays more because there is no free tier so it's just like they're anyway. So, interesting. Yeah, no, that's yeah, yeah. super interesting because dude, I play the premium. Like yeah, I don't yeah, want to, I, I fucking, yeah, yeah. I use that all day, every day. Me too. <laughs> so. And it's mind blowing, dude. Like honestly, like how people are not on either Apple music or Spotify really blows my mind. Dude, I'm like, too. bro, this is me fucking too. any song you can ever think of is For the most right part. here. Yeah. You know, like it's fucking crazy. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a rad thing, but it also has made the industry insane. You know, like there's now, you know, it used to be like, there was like labels were like the gatekeepers almost, you know, like labels were, you had to get a deal and the deal and the label, you know, you got to deal with the label and the label put out the music and like they, you know, they were kind of the curators of, of, of different scenes and whatnot, you know, like, yeah. Oh, I was really into this label. Like, they always put out these kinds of bands. And so like they put out this new band. I like, I don't know this band, but I probably will like them because they're on this label. Like, you know, that's kind of like the old, like kind of the old school way. And, and now as well too. But before it was like the thing you had to get on a label. And like now, like you don't have to have a label. You can just upload it through TuneCore or through CD baby or distro kid or wherever. And you don't need a label to reach people. You so just like, need Instagram and a, and a computer essentially. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, but with that has come fucking just an over amount of like an over amount, an abundance of, 
of weak just, ass shit too. Well, yeah. I, yeah, for lack yeah. of a, for lack, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't worry, I'll say it. Yeah, yeah, right, I'll right, say it. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. For weak ass shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where there's just a lot of stuff, and you have to get through. It's noise. It's like noise, and, it, and so now the noise levels here, and like to get through that noise level, yeah. it takes more work and you takes more effort. You got to sift through the BS. You got there's a lot more bullshit to sift through. You yeah, know? and that's that's the challenge with something like Spotify is like, how do you sift through the bullshit, and how do you you know find the time? How do you make it interesting, and you know and I all, I'm like a firm believer of like, and like kind of how, you know, my philosophy with the label is, and, and definitely the pepper guys are on board with it too, is like, it has to start with good music. Like whether they're a big band or a small band, like this, if the music is quality, the music is solid, like we're going to find a way to fucking make it big, to make it reach people, to make it bigger that's than what it is, you know, like it has to be good music. And so that's kind of like what we're trying to do is just be a part of, you know, help, help, you know, bands and so you're about grooming them. Like, well, like the guys that the guy, the pepper guys are about grooming other bands too. As yeah. Well. I mean, that's not the only component, but for no, sure yeah, there are, but ba- one there are the bands components. at various levels in their career for sure. You yeah. know, like, um, there are bands that, you know, that are, are, are at earlier levels in their career. And then there's, you know, like, it's kind of like, well, yeah, other bands stages, are starting yeah. and then there's pepper that's on, on their side, on their career and there's everywhere in between. And so kind of, you know, analyzing where they're at, what do they need to get to that next level and how can we be a value and how can we, you know, provide a service, like you said, you know, customer service at the end of the day is like, how can we provide a service and how can we help grow them and, you know, their fan base and shit and their fan base and, yep. and, and make everything better. Like the way they present themselves, the way that, you know, just the, the everything, you know? And mm-hmm. so, you know, and then, in that process, if they grow, then, you know, they may want to leave and go do other things or they want to stay and continue, you know, it's like awesome. But like, I just, I just want to make, I want to make everyone's experience fucking stoked where they come through law and they're like, dude, we had, it was, it was great. You know, it was top notch and it was, you know, I just want to, I just want to keep doing everything better than we were before. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, to tie it into even just like a, the most basic little work thing I've ever heard was like, you don't quit your job. You quit your boss. Huh? You know, I, like that. I mean, that's, I don't know where I heard that. I know. I think Leslie told me that honestly the other day. And I was like, dude, that's so fucking true. Yeah. I like, on the real. Yeah. I mean, you can apply that to anything. It's unless you're working for yourself, obviously, but then, then you're on your, you're your own worst credit. Yeah. Which you better, is, you better step it up then. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're slacking, bro. Yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah. to yourself I'll like a crazy myself, person. Yeah. <laughs> fucking blowing it right yeah. now, son. And that's real though, too. You got to be real with yourself. Though, dude, you know? always, <laughs> always. But I mean, like I, I appreciate la passion yeah. that you're putting into yeah. that, dude. That's what's yeah. up. Um, it's fucking tight. Yeah, it's it's it's. Thanks, man. You're yes. creating a vibe, dude. And yeah, like I'm people tr- are like are like they appreciate that vibe, and then they probably like if your if your energy and your vibe is putting out positivity, the people that are surrounding you, and they're picking that up off you, they're gonna want to work just as hard, if not yeah. harder, because they're like, yo, they take pride in what they're doing yeah. and like who they're a part of, and the people that are supporting them and they're like, hell yeah, Paul's got my back. Yeah. It's not just law. Paul's got yeah. my back. And that's, I mean, and that's like what a label is. They're your family. They're your backstop. They're your like, you know, we're, we're here. Like I want it to be a family experience, you know, like you're here. It's like your family. You're in the law. Dude, they've got you automatic, you know, like, it's, yep. you know, it's kind of like, there's no questions like, yeah, yeah, we got that's you. You know, it's not like, so yeah, we're trying to build that culture. And like a lot, of, I mean, luckily for me, a lot of that work has been laid you know, because yeah. they've been doing this for as long as they've been doing it and they've, you know, have been doing a great job at what they've been doing. And so I'm I'm kind of coming in and like, OK, like, what can we do differently? Where can we, you know, improve upon? But like a lot of the fucking groundwork of just, you know, a lot of it has been laid, which is very I'm very fortunate for that. You know, it's like kind of like the, the, the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Mark Jackson laid the groundwork for Son. Steve Kerr <laughs> all day. This is like people. Dude, I had an Uber driver today. And, or whatever lift whatever i don't know who it was and me and the like i was just cruising i was a little stoned i'm not gonna lie i was sitting in the back of the uber so i was like okay i'm just cruising i'm just looking out the window and then the dude was like so man like something 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 and i was like oh well what do you think about basketball and he was like dude he's like i was like, oh who's your team or something like that and he was like oh the lakers i was like bro i absolutely love basketball and uh I was like, I don't, you know, I'm a Golden State Warriors fan, whatever. I, but that doesn't matter to me because I love, like, if there's a basketball game on, I'll yeah. watch it pretty much most of the time. 
and uh, I, you know, I started, and immediately it was like this dude had been like my best homie that I'd never yeah. had, and it was like, well, what do you think about this? And it was like, yeah. oh man, well, you know, this thought, this, and he started like just opening it yeah. up about the basketball. What's, what so like what blows my mind about that is that kind of thing that you ask that dude exists in everybody, and like, what is that thing for you have everybody? To unlock, yeah, you have to unlock it, you and what's crazy it. is when you unlock it, like fucking people open up and they break, like they kind of let, like it's their it's true a, personality, it's like who they are yeah, and what they're into, you yeah. know, like because you might be into things and like geek out on things, and they're like, oh, you don't get it, and it's like you say that, and like, oh, what? Like, yeah, well, that that's that? the thing. It's like, dude, everybody who comes to the show, it's like. When I have people talking to me about, oh, the podcast and this, that, and this, I was, I was just talking about this today. I was like, you know, it's funny when I'm like out chilling now, I've had it, a podcast has been on enough now where I've had legit people come like, Hey man, listen to your podcast. Like you're Connell, right? And I'm like, what the nice. fuck? You know, it's, it's sick. And I appreciate every single one of you. Um, but it's, it's that, or I'll have friends who are like, yo, the podcast is looking good or whatever. Like, but you have so many different people on and it's like, bro exactly what you're saying like i find certain things that definitely i'm interested in but if i can talk to you about what you're into sure that's that's you you're seeing you at your best you're right, like you're right, giving right. it out and that's it's so positive for sure and because everybody has that one thing they it's do. the key is unlocking they that do. they do you know and you never know what it's going to be with people like they just kind of get it and then all of a sudden they're it's like boom and running all and day about it. And, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It's like, and then people are like, I've never heard that person talk so much. Yeah. Like, yeah. Totally. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is. Yeah, man. There, it's crazy how that works. Dude, I fucking love it. I think yeah. it's so sick, um, especially when it's like homies like yourself that I can have on that are talking to me about things I genuinely, like, I'm a fan, first and foremost. I mean, I I, I honestly couldn't tell you one Pepper song. I'd never have. <laughs> no I mean, but like, I know... I've listened to them so many times because Leslie pe- plays Pepper yeah. and she tells me the same exact things that you tell me about how influential these songs are to her and yeah. what they mean to her yeah. and the things that um, she can reflect on back in her life that make it just as much a part of um, her growing up and her childhood and her important memories. This is my wife, right? This, yeah. this is the lady who I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with. So I want to get to know about her in every aspect that I can as much as she li- hears me talk about some Bay area rap, like, Oh, this shit was hella lit. Like yeah. it was hella hypey, <laughs> you know, whatever it's, she could probably give two shits. But at the end of the day, because I've taken that time to like tell her how I felt about the music that I grew up listening to, I want to embrace the, the Island vibe and yeah. the Island reggae, the Joe, Joanne, Joanne music that <laughs> I've come to love, you know, yeah. like, um, I don't think it was Homegrown the band, but I heard a song called Homegrown. Like, uh, it's, fuck, I can't think of the song right now, and I won't butcher it for everybody who knows. But Leslie heard me sing it, and she was like, "Oh Hawaiian, oh Hawaiian." And she's like, "Whoa, nice. what you singing over there?" <laughs> nice. Like, she's like, "Well, are you local now?" And I'm like, "Oh, that was just a good song. Like, I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it was catchy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> it was nice. on Oahu too. Nice. But um, nice. Fuck, man, I." I just have to say, I think what you're doing is so sick. Thanks, man. I'm super jealous, but like in the best way, because I'm not only am I happy for you that you're doing such a cool thing that you're like, sounds like you're meant to be doing. Thanks, dude. But you, you fucking, I can, do, I can only imagine like a hip hop rapper or anything like that. You're like the dude backstage. You're you're kind of orchestrating everything that's going into it. You have a successful band in front of you. You have people like vibing out to the energy that they're putting out in the universe. Yeah, And fuck man it's so sick thanks, I, I, like, I get hyped it's, for you thanks man it's it's rad and it's i mean it's it, it's always something new and it's like new adventures all the time and yep. so it's it's rad it's like new challenges and new whatever and um yeah it's it, it's cool thanks man it, it's it's fun you know do you have any words of uh ask like inspiration for anybody who's out there is like, like trying to figure out what the fuck they're like dude how do you get to your level Oh, man just keep doing stuff i i don't know like i mean put as, yourself as vague, out there. as vague as that is like keep doing stuff and like i mean i think the one thing that like i definitely always tried was like when we were in high roots because i did a lot of the like you know i i, I kind of did a lot of the the business side of things like i kind of collected the money and like 
you know, had the bank account and had the like, you know, oh, oh, if, wow. we're gonna, if we're going to go here, we got to rent a van or event here. We're going to stay here. Like we got to do that, you know, like kind of like the logistical kind of business side of things. And like, I kind of always treated that thing, which is like kind of how you're treating this, like always treated that as like, I'm, you know, make sure every email that I send is not like is, is professional and is, is solid. And it's yeah. like, you know, just that I'm yeah. representing myself in that way. And I've always kind of tried to do that. Um, and then like, I think that that just helps, you know, like I, I don't know, kind of helps the, the entire process, you know? I, I, and I think you have to just keep doing stuff. Like, I mean, when we, as the band, we were just going to shows and you would meet people and like, granted when we started out, we were like partying for sure. But like, when it's business, it's business, you know, and you got to handle business and you got to be able to take care of that. And you got to respond to things and you can't ghost people or whatever, yeah, you know, no. you gotta, like you got to handle your shit. And like, I think that's definitely a, an early lesson that, you know, had learned to try to, to try to do. And like always like, I mean, for me, the situation came out of just staying in contact with people that I've have crossed paths with and staying on a good relationship. And I mean, it just kind of shows you like you just, fuck just stay in good, stay in good contact with people stay hustling and always do stuff and you know like you never know you just never know what's going to be the opportunity that's going to kind of arise you know or even the people who i feel like you're going to run run into later in life that for you, sure and like if you were a dick to them oh yeah. man good and luck yeah and it's, <laughs> and it's not to be and it's not to say like i'm going to get something from somebody later in life but it's just like yeah just treat everybody cool and be cool with as many people as you can because fuck you never know what's gonna happen you know dude my grandmother on my mom's side my my mom my grandmother uh she always said you catch more uh, flies with honey yeah. than you do with vinegar <laughs> that's so funny i say that all the time too. dude it's uh, hella real than, yeah for sure absolutely hella man. real but dude i burned so many bridges when i was younger i mean it's we like, all did you know always. like we all made mistakes and we all yeah. did things and it's kind of like at what point do you like recognize that and then try to like okay, correct moving it forward yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this and i mean you know hopefully the damage isn't too nuts for, for certain things you know for, if it's yeah in an industry that you're in then it's like oh, okay i gotta do some repairing or yeah whatever. but you know like i think that you just i don't know for me like it was like i was always at work and i was always like while i was at work outside hustling like oh i gotta do my work and i'm gonna fucking blast out these emails or follow up on these things and work on this website or blah blah blah, blah. like you know and it was kind of like i always wanted it to be where like the stuff that I was doing on the side could be the thing that like I could be doing all the time. And like, it's not until the last five years that like, that that's happened, you know? And like, dude, that's so interesting that you say that because uh, fuck, I saw something and it was, um, it might've even been like a Gary V thing talking about. It. It's like people nowadays, they can't just have like, there's not going to be a job that is right. 30 years that you're it's doing. Not. This. Everybody yeah. who is trying to be successful has a side thing. Yeah. And you, by even just doing the first step of doing a side yeah. thing, that is your process and moving from this cog in the wheel to doing what you want to really be doing For and sure. making that flourish. You have to, I mean, like you have to have whatever that is. And like, I, like I always, even always telling Michelle, like, you know, she's super creative and can make, you know, she's really good with like knitting and arts and crafts. I'm like, dude, you should have an Etsy page. Like you should start this thing. Like just do it because you just have to do and put energy in that. And like, like even if it's the littlest thing that has its own ripple effects and like, you know, you have this thing on the side, but yeah, dude, like I guess now in the, in the industry now, like there's no, like you have to have side hustles. Like it's kind, of, have it's kind of like a lot of people's main hustle is compartmentalized in side hustles. You know, it's like I drive Lyft for fucking 20 hours and I do this for 10 hours and I do this for five, you know, I do, you know, whatever. And like, that's kind of how people in the gig economy are kind of making things work now. That's how you have to, I mean, unless you have, I mean, dude, Leslie, for instance, she has, she's very lucky. She gets that. She has one job and that's what she has to do. Me, dude, I do, I do this, I do the coffee and then I'll drive Uber and Lyft. Yeah. It's like straight up. No yeah. shame. No, no, for sure. Not at all. And like for, for music and like things in that nature, like you can go like, I mean, you talk to bands that are successful and like, there, there's not any of them that were like, yeah, I just was given this job. Yeah. Like, you know, like I just was, you know, woke up and now I'm in this band that's really successful. It's like, fuck, yeah. they work their ass off, you know, yeah. bands like, like all of that stuff is they fucking have hustled, you know, they, from, from putting hours in the van to like fucking eating ramen for, for months on end, you know, yeah. with no end in sight, knowing that like 
yeah, one day we're going to fucking get paid. Like, no, you know? And like, that's the thing is like, you have to just keep hustling. And that's it's a the, labor of love. It's man. a labor of love and you have to love it. And like in music is, I mean, that's one of the fuck, you know, it's like, it, it's similar to like, um, to like, uh, the triple A's in baseball. Like, you know, they're like right there. Like they're right there from the pros. They're, they're not there. The they don't know if they're going to get there or not. And like, you know, they, you know, and it's kind of like, you just got to keep grinding and keep going. And then you never know what breaks going to happen where, you know, where that's going to happen. And, and I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in the majors now, but like, I definitely feel like I'm very blessed to be in the position that I'm in at a, at a level operating at a higher level than I was before. And with bands that I'm, I'm just, it's a cool confluence of, of passion and, um, and career, which is, which is a, f- a very blessed thing. It's a very rare thing for sure. I fuck you with know? that super hard. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that like serenades me, serenades with me. Uh, yeah, there's serenades. Resonates. Resonates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I got you. Resonates with me. Yeah. In, in a very real way because, dude, it's in like my little side hustle, which is like doing this podcast. Yeah. It's, this is like a passion thing, right. but I love meaningful. what I do yeah. though in coffee and that nice. is just as much my own passion. So it's in a really weird way. I never get bummed on what That's I have awesome. to do because it's, bro, I can't, I can't have negativity in yeah. my life. It's yeah. just, it's, it's a, it's a crazy, I, I don't know. I yeah. can't have that shit oh, in my life. And if uh, when negative people come around me, it like, ugh. I just yeah. like, I start to, I feel it yeah. and I can't have it yeah, around me for sure. So it's like having that passion for both things that I'm doing in my life is, uh, it's the only way I know how to live. I Definitely. feel like, and it's, it also comes from people like that. Like when you're. Dude, when I had, like, I was so broke one time, I had like 94 cents to my name and I had a box of Cheerios and a fucking, um, like a strawberry jelly, like jam, whatever J- uh-huh. jam it was jam. And then I had a Jiffy thing and I had to make that shit last for like two weeks. Wow. 94 cents, that's peanut good. butter jelly and a big ass family box of Cheerios. And, and here I we fuck are. It. Dude. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> I remember dipping the peanut butter and the jelly or the jam or whatever on one spoon and then dipping the spoon in the chair in the Cheerios and just sitting there eating it talking about like, I'm going to be a pro skater one day, <laughs> if I, you know, whatever. But then you finally figure it out and you make it through those times, yeah. but those times make you who you are. Yeah. And now to the point where it's like, you're grown ass man For living sure. on your own, making, doing your own things, loving what yeah. you do. And yeah. And no matter what industry you're in, like, I think everybody has some sort of story to that regard, oh, you know, bro, yeah. to like being like, fuck, I have got nothing. And like, you know, what am I doing? And, you know, I, 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 and I don't know. I have a lot of respect for like, I definitely like for like for entrepreneurs and, and whatever, but just for people that are just going for it, you know, putting themselves out there, trying shit and like, you know, trying and failing and trying again and trying and just doing something that's like, you know, like, I don't want to say it's the easy way to go to go get a job that you don't like, but cause it's the harder way. It's ultimately the harder way because it's like, oh, that's a harder life. You know, I, f- I feel like I'd like to get up and you don't want to be there. Like that's tough, but like, like, but it's guaranteed money and it's guaranteed, you know, dude, like, embrace the suck. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I, I hated it growing yeah. up, but as an older person, like I'm not older person, but yeah. like as a man now, I look back on that shit and I'm just like, oh, yeah. it fucking pumps me up. Yeah. Like embrace the suck. And even now, even now, yeah. like learning things like, dude. Yeah. I mean, I like I, it's I, I'm very, yeah, very blessed to be able to like I've we get home and I, I go home and, you know, I can't sleep or something. I'll whip out the laptop and just fucking start working. I've lost some work. Yeah, because yeah. I like it. You no, know, it's like, tight. I, do it. I, I got shit I got to do. I got stuff I got to fucking do. I want to knock it out. Like I'm going to do it. And it's like, that's just kind of that's awesome. You yeah. Know? I feel I'm, I'm super stoked on that and, and very blessed. And, um, yeah, man. And like, you know, we got a lot of cool stuff too. Like we got coming up, we have this thing called uh yo radio, which is like the okay. law records channel, which is, uh, uh, on YouTube. It's, it's on this app. It's on a, it's a digital radio station. Okay. Essentially. So it's like, there's an app and then you can listen online as well at, at yo radio.com backslash like law records. And it's basically 24 hour radio station that plays our entire catalog. And then we have, um, each band is playing their own uh, playlist of songs, their own selections. What so they like, like you know, ex- stuff exactly like that. like that. So you yeah. tune in at various times. And then we have podcasts like um, Kaleo does um, Rebel and Muse podcast, which is him and his wife Mel, 
and they do um, like yoga stuff. They do like they, they talk about holistic um, just healing, healing. Yeah, all, all kinds of exactly, exactly. And so like that podcast is on there. Sick. Yassad does. Uh, um, it's called Disposable Heroes. It's a drummers podcast where he interviews uh, drummers of all different bands and stuff. And so that, that podcast is on there. And so we're doing that. We just rolled that out, and that was two weeks ago or so that we did um we we kicked it off with the live stream of pepper set of actually the entire set of it was a catastrophe fortunate youth pepper and iration we, li- oh, we live streamed the whole event on our channel sick which is rad yeah yeah so that was rad that was last i think last friday august 3rd or last august 2nd yeah so we're doing that and we you know we got these releases and trying to just fucking you know trying to tr- trying to do it man trying to dude okay well I definitely, from now on, anytime you have anything from Law Records coming out, just send it my way. Absolutely. I definitely will help promote that. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Dude. Yeah. On the real. Yeah, because yeah. that is fucking sick. Uh, how hyped you're getting right now? As yeah. I'm like, I mean, for people who can't see, obviously, Paul gets really excited. Yeah, yeah. About I do. when he starts talking about this. And I that gets me fucking pumped. Like, yeah. I want to help. Thanks, man. Thanks, um, dude. Well, like, we're about to... It's coming up on like an hour and a half almost. Oh snap! Has it really been that long? Yeah, bro. Oh shit. So let's like let's wrap it up because like right. I feel just like I feel the passion, bro, All right. and I love Thanks, it. Man. And dude, let's I, let's get some let's get Brady on here. Let's get yeah, through the roots. Through the let's roots. Get yeah, him on for here. sure. Yeah, they would. I'm sure they would love to do it. Yeah, dude. yeah. Brady and Evan guys. Oh and, my god. Yeah, yeah. Let's get we can even pro- get them to play something too. Let's let's. We'll, 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 we'll talk. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll work it out. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it, man. Hey, thanks for pa- having me, Paul. Man. Tell people where they can find you at. Uh, they can find me at uh, at Paul S. Milbury on Instagram, okay. and uh, Law Records is at Law underscore Records, and then at Law dash Records dot com. And um, yeah, man, we're doing we're doing big things. So stay yes. up. You know, keep an eye on it. Anything to keep in uh, uh, that's like coming on the pipeline within the next, like, but before the end of the year, that people should keep a, an eye out for. Man, um, at the moment, just stay tuned because there's a lot stay of stuff. Tuned. There's a lot of stuff in works. There's okay. a lot of stuff in the works. That, you know, we just got through a bunch of these releases where now they're out. Now we're gonna promote the shit out of them, and now we're gonna fucking work them. And we got some other stuff coming up. Tours. On this radio station. Well, I mean, all the bands are on tour. I mean, Cashed Out's on tour. Through the Roots is going out on tour in September. Pepper's going out again next week for the the third round of um, of uh, Live from Paradise tour. Um, Von Ali is doing shows. Shane Hall is another artist that we have on our label. He's doing shows. Dude, if Through uh, the Roots can get, if we can get them on here before they leave on tour, when do they leave on tour in September? Um, I don't know, but their last show is in San Diego. I think September twenty fourth. Let's, so, so let's yeah. we'll, get them. And we'll on probably there. be live streaming that event as well, bro. Um, and then Tunnel Vision um, is going out with uh, Cashed Out and Tunnel Vision are two bands that are on it on the label, and they're going out with Hyrie and Red Gold Green in, Ooh. In for the fall tour. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, all the bands. Are, Hyrie's playing at North Park. She's playing at the Observatory. That's going to be with Tunnel Vision. So Tunnel Vision is going to be on that show. Let's fucking dude. Let's get these guys yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, let's for have sure. Give them an outlet. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll probably live stream that event as well too. All just right. FYI, so dude. you can so you can hear listen to that whole show. Big live. things. Yeah, popping. man. We're doing we're doing things. You know, we're, we're you know we're we're doing things. You know, <laughs> it's cool, man. It's it's fucking it's blessing and it's rad to be a part of it. And hopefully we can just continue to grow it and just continue to grow it to where. You know, there's there's four of me working with me. There you go. And then there's you know, then they got their own thing, and we got a radio division, we got a PR just put division. Put it out there, Pimpin. Yeah, just put it out there, know? man. The universal respond. I like it. I like it. That's what we do. All right, bro. So, all right, brother. Thanks, Thank you, man. Paul. All right, brother. Peace. Yeah.